almost the 30th county. We are an interlocal agency of, of the counties. So we are the joint risk management department of the 24 counties that are self-insured um, here in the state of Utah, rather than being individually self-insured like, like Salt Lake County, where they have their own risk managers and claims people and their own funding mechanism within the county to pay their claims. The other 24 counties don't want to do it on their own, so they do it together. And that risk management department that they've created is USIP. So we work for you. Uh, and we, we, we hope that that relationship uh, breeds some good interchange between us, that we're not here to find ways to charge you more, uh, find ways to keep you from doing fun things at your fair. We're here to help you do the things that you want and need to do uh, and have you do it safer to help save the county's money. Um, we were created by UAC and we're committed to assisting counties in, in effective and efficient county government. So there again, uh, we're trying to find ways that, to help counties do their job better. Um, and uh, the, the better that we do, the less money we have to have the counties send us to fund claims. And it's there for other fun things like new grandstands and, and uh, fencing and things like that. Um, again, we're not here to tell you what, what to do. Um, we're just here to try and minimize the risk. You know, there are different agencies out there uh, throughout local government that feel it's their place to tell local government what they can and cannot do. And we're very uh, cognizant of that. Or we, we watch that very closely here at USIP, that that is not what the county's created us to do. We're not a regulator of them to tell them what they can't do. They created us to help them do the things that they need to do, no matter how risky they are. I'm not going to tell you that. We won't tell you don't have that event. Some of them just are too risky to take on that risk. But they would still leave it to a decision that's going to be yours. Um, we just want to be a resource to you and help you make your fair as, as good of an event as possible and as safe an event as possible. You know, again, Corey's going to talk about claims, but a, a big part of what uh, we see with the claims that come out of fairs is that as much as there is an expense for us to pay a claim, there's a much larger expense, I think, in your own county with the ill feelings between someone that got hurt or their property got damaged and the fair board or the commissioners or the county in general. And so where we can help you prevent losses like that that are going to create those political issues and bad feelings in and amongst the county, you know, we want to do that as well. It's not all about the money. So with that, we're going to get started today. And uh, our first speaker is Corby Sigurd. Uh, many of you maybe have worked with Corby if you've had a claim. Corby's our claims manager here at USIP. He's been handling the county's claims since 2001, and uh, Corby holds several designations with the Insurance Institute of America. He's got all kinds of alphabet soup behind his name that says that he really knows claims inside and out. Uh, and uh, he's also the past president of the Utah Public Risk Managers Association um, that uh, we, we participate in to help out not only counties, but cities and school districts around the state to help them monitor and, and manage their risks. And Corby's been very uh, uh, active in that organization. So, Corby's going to come up this morning and talk to you about the claims that we've seen over the years with fares and some ideas um, on what made those claims a little more difficult for us to handle, and I'll be interjecting in Corby's presentation as far as what things that you can possibly do to not have this same claim again in your county. So, Corby? No need to clap for me. Yeah, no need to clap. He's dead. <laughs> no, you know, it's amazing. First thing I want to say is we're not, we're, this is going to be more of an open discussion rather than me just talking and I'll be just listening because that would probably drive you all crazy. But um, first thing I want to tell you is it's amazing how well the fairs are run. You know, I've been here 13 years and they asked me to look at some of the claims we've had from the fairs and I really couldn't find any that there was negligence on part of the county. You know, there are claims that, that resulted from other things. 
And uh, so I want to have an open discussion about that because even the claims I uh, we're going to talk about, really there was nothing the county did wrong. And you're going to see how they still resulted in a claim, even though the county did nothing wrong. But to get us all started in talking, we have a prize. I need the bunny. Okay? <laughs> For the first person who can guess or, or say what they think is the, the number one cause of most of the claims out of affairs. What is it? No? No. Tripping? Tell, tell me why you do you have a lot of trip and falls at your affairs? No, I'm just guessing. Okay, like guess and then kind of give me an idea so that we can kind of see, because we don't know sometimes what you guys are experiencing in affairs. I would imagine there are some trip and falls on them. I mean, because I have seen some of those. I just, actually, I just guess that because across the board, I think facility-wise, that's the number one call. Yeah, and, and most of those are the result of, the fairgrounds are a lot of times on grass or you know these open areas, and there'll be a, a, a depression, whether it's a sprinkler or something, and then some will fall on that. But it's actually not our number one problem. And, and our, it's funny because uh, you just never, it'd be a hard one to guess if you didn't, if you didn't think about it. So, so what else, what other problems do you see? Yeah, food poisoning. Food poisoning, that, that's probably a come up, cut, but we haven't had too many claims on it. But it, why does that happen though? Just too many amateurs cooking. Because we have seen, I know we've seen counties report to us that someone had food poisoning, but we've never actually had a claim. What did you say? But just the mom pot, you know, little places. The local cherry pickers are seeing all sorts of things that happens. So. Right. So what is the rule on that? What's the rule of food? They have to be self-insured that are there. Food handlers. Food handlers permit. What about um, the local Girl Scout group there or something that wants to make homemade caramels? Do you guys allow homemade candies and homemade things or if they have their own booth and they have a certificate from our local health department then yes but they, they got to they got to fit into the guise of preparing it within a, an industrial kitchen rather than a home type atmosphere. Okay, so the way we're probably not getting the claims, this is what the information I wanted because I I was curious what you guys think are the most common claims and yet how come we don't get them? And and that's that's the secret. Because then the other counties can say, oh yeah, that's what we need to do in our county if we're not doing it. So you have them have a food permit, a food handler's permit, and have a booth and their own insurance. Mm -hmm. Has anyone else seen those kind of claims for food handling? Okay. What else? We're bad cooks and you're in a county though, so we <laughs> <laughs> One thing I'll mention when it comes to the, the, the food uh, vendors is if you're asking them to have their own insurance, you need to make sure that they've got more than just a standard general liability policy because that won't cover food poisoning from preparation of food. They need to have the completed products, either completed products endorsement on their liability insurance or a separate completed products policy. And see, that starts into an area that's just almost impossible for 90% of the food vendors. In that, especially the Girl Scout type. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's overlooked a lot. Right. And it's a simple endorsement for any agent in town to add to their policy. Is it it's just a matter of no, not, not to add to it. What, what's going to happen is that's going to be the person who's going to ask them, where are, you, where are you cooking this food? Who is it that's cooking this food? Let me see a copy of your certificate from the health department that, that, that you know what you're doing. So a lot of the bad guy stuff that you would normally have to do, their insurance company, their insurance underwriter is going to do for you by looking at that and saying, you know, the, the more controls that they have in place, the better preparation of the food that they're doing, the cheaper the insurance endorsement will be. If they're cooking it in their garage and, and it really don't have much for anything for controls, it will be expensive for them if they can get it. But, but there again, it's not on you that they can't get it. It's on their insurance agent. What's really amazed me, and, and there are some answers on this one, and maybe you just don't have it, but I've always wondered why we don't get a lot of claims for alcohol-related claims. What are you guys doing right in that area? Yeah, we don't allow alcohol. No, we, we have a community. That solves that, right? Yeah. 
So is there any candidate that has a that allows any kind of asphalt? Mm -hmm. Okay, these two. What what yeah, happens? about beer wagon that the, the American Legion does? Um, mm. <coughs> when they're they're put down at a certain place away from most of the other vendors and, and um, we also have a lot of uh, security going on and they can't bring it in and out. If they buy it on the inside they have to stay on the inside. And so it was pretty simple to us. <laughs> Security there. Yeah, they, they follow. Have you ever had any claims done? Like, <coughs> to bring the county in on the claim? No. No drunk problems? Oh, we oh, had drunk problems. problems. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I'm always surprised. I, I, if, I was to, if I was sitting where you are and someone says, what do you think of the most common claims? I would have guessed the result of drinking. We have one claim that is sort of the result of. Drinking, but, but really, we've, we've not had any claims I can think of that, that I can tie in because they, they served alcohol. Sorry to be down, but what would they claim? Oh, uh, you'd be surprised. Anything that someone could claim, they'll throw the county in the lawsuit. I mean, they just, oh. they'll just name you. If someone trips and falls while they're drunk, <coughs> they could still name us in the lawsuit. It's your fault. Because you've allowed the alcohol to be sold on your premise. Yes. Well, and see, yeah. with the security that we have, I think that, well, I've, I've witnessed several of a deputy and our sheriff that um, themselves get right in the face of drunk people and tell them to leave their need to leave or they'll be held off. Still, though, even when they leave and, and get the red. They escort them to their car. And then a third party accident happens and who they get will sue Duchenne County. So hopefully because they it let originated them try at your place. <laughs> yeah, hopefully. Right. hopefully. <laughs> it was their choice to buy it. Exactly. This is what I'm trying. I'm trying to get you to think this way. This is exactly how I'm trying to get you to think. Is how in the world does the county get named in lawsuits when they do so much to prevent it? And it's exactly dead on. You'd be surprised at the claims we think. How in the world did the county? I mean, they did everything. They put the item off the off the fairgrounds, not even on the county property, but because the fair is what drew them to the event. And they got hurt out there. They still named the county. And then, and then, Johnny's found an interesting thing out this year that maybe there's a group that comes in that calls themselves something. Um, let's say they they live in Sevier County and they want to have a an event and they call themselves the Sevier County Girls Club. And they come in and they they have really nothing to do with the county. We get named in the lawsuit because they had the name Sevier County Girls Club, which. You want to talk about that for a second? Well, well there are statutes <laughs> that prohibit um, certainly any other agency, political agency. So if you are, if you have a group from the school district that calls themselves the Sevier County something, the Sevier County Recreation District, or, or something like that, they they cannot use your county name in their name by statute. Um, and we 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 tried to uh, educate the county attorneys on this because we know it still happens quite a bit. And, and businesses as well are, are not to use the name of a county or a city in their name. So Deshane County Transmission, not supposed to use that name. Um, and I, you know, when I was a claims person, I used to get uh, claims all the time from Otter Tail County Power and Light. And you know, people like that that called themselves by the county and so it, it confused people that they thought it really was the county running that organization. Uh, you know, Davis County Search and Rescue. Now that's what we see all the time that the search and rescue yeah, but guys. You know they're come. actually affiliated with the sheriff's office. Right. And if they so are they're an entity out of that sheriff's office so they can use that. Right. So that. if they are part of the county and they're organized by the sheriff, they're controlled by the sheriff and the sheriff has them there at the fair to to promote what they do, that's fine. But when it's a group of guys that, you know, they yeah, they volunteer when the sheriff wants them out in the field, but beyond actually searching and rescuing, they just do their own thing, not under the control of the sheriff. That's a discussion that the county attorney should have with them, that they need to call themselves the Central <coughs> Utah Search and Rescue or something of the like. Because it does, it does point the finger at the county when the plaintiff's attorney is trying to find as many people as they can to put on the, on the claim. But you know what I've found is just the ignorance of the general public 
causes this perception that it's all associated <coughs> with the government. Because if it's a function that's going on in your county, it's got to be a county liability. You know, the government let them do it. When we have no idea what they're doing. You know, and then as far as the school districts, people have a very, very hard time separating the schools, which are state, from the county because they're called usually by the name of the county. I mean, it's Davis School District, it's Salt Lake School District, it's you went to school district. So they automatically think that it's got to have a county on the end of it and that we, the county's got to be responsible for whatever anybody did. So a lot of it is just general public ignorance as to how this all functions. Right, and I, and, and, I, and I know that that was the thinking behind that legislation that doesn't allow other entities to call themselves Hughes County, that your name in their names because of that. Because still, like you say, Charlene, we usually get named in lots of cases that are actually the highway patrol or the uh, probation services, state probation services, county continually gets named in all of those and so we have to spend your money to hire an attorney to get back to their attorney and explain to them the county had nothing to do with this and they generally won't just drop the county from the suit they'll wait until a judge drops you from the suit so you know we're spending thousands of dollars on every single one of those that the county had absolutely nothing to do with so we'll talk about some of those things during the day to day that the, the, the education before they come to the fair, I think really helps a lot that you spell out in the permits and the leases and the rental agreements with vendors that are coming on board that they are coming on the, at their own risk, that you know, you're not responsible for their equipment, you're not responsible for their property, you're not responsible for their animals, that yes, you take certain security measures, but the county does not ensure that their property, animals, equipment are, are safe from harm. They take that risk by bringing them onto the county fair. We well, have kind of a strange twist to that. Last year during our county fair, we had a group of people who have vendor booths and they set up on the lawn of this people pass coming to the fairground. They called it the county fair boutique. Well, it upset all my vendors who called up our county attorney and said, what do we do about that? He said nothing because they did not write severe county fairs for me. So. Now that was good. That's interesting. <laughs> We've had that come up before. People have called here saying, I got hurt. And we get talking and it's one of these booths that was set out outside and they call themselves a county something. And yeah. Not even. It and wasn't at the fairgrounds. It was on their way. Yeah. They did. They called it just the county fair. Interesting. We have that if you what you were going to make them. It, it's more of a blanket statement, but we had a recent ruling by a judge uh, inquiring about whether an individual who had a daughter killed on a highway in Mission County could sue you, Doc. Is there any provision with this Governmental Immunity Act that we could that we could incorporate countywide, <coughs> let alone fairwise, that would that would automatically save you guys the headache of having to reprove and reprove and reprove that you're not associated with a lot of that stuff. And if you are, you're immune to standard practice and procedures with the fair to a certain level. Uh, and I don't know. And, and we are. There, there's, there's a lot of things that, that the immunities provide for us once the claim is there. But unfortunately, they, they, well, Depends on what side of it you're on. The, the, the courts are really hesitant to prohibit people from bringing a lawsuit. Are they, they want people to have that right to bring a lawsuit against anyone they want. Um, the, 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 so the bad news is we often have to defend claims that you have nothing to do with. The good news is, is that for the most part the judges see very quickly that you didn't have anything to do with it, that you have immunity, uh, that you did owe a duty to the person that was injured, and they'll they'll throw the claim out. Not only will you, they dismiss you from the claim, but in, in certain situations, but a lot of times they'll just throw the claim out. For but that has to go to the judge each and every time. Yes, and it's still still yeah. us. And we just had a ruling last week. I don't know if you saw last week. I'm trying to think what city it was where the the road. That's one I was referring yeah, to. Yeah, the road was yeah. going. Yeah, and they said that the county or the city was not. Or who was it? You don't. Mm -hmm. It's not responsible for the injuries. And that got me. We we visited this 
25 years ago, we brought legislation over from Colorado that was more geared towards um, the alpaca industry, but we used that, Jack Sites introduced it into the legislation and brought it into the Fairgrounds Act 25 years ago. And that brought us a lot of sleep at night with the signs that we have around the facility. We are immune because you assume liability once you walk into this. Probably wouldn't hold up in court, but it stops 99% of the people that get hurt from even pursuing them for it. Yeah. Uh, because they do assume the liability to some degree. So any scare tactic we can come up with, we use. And I didn't know if that could fall in line with something like that. Yeah. Uh, the most common time we get named in a lawsuit that we really have nothing to do with actually is, this isn't this context, sorry, but as far as getting named in, was going back to the using your name, is ambulance, Severe County Ambulance, Kane County Ambulance. Uh, they're not part of the county. They're just an ambulance service that comes to the fair to pick up one of these people that fell down or something, and then maybe they're leaving and they get in a wreck or, or something and the person was injured. Somehow we've been named in several that are the something county ambulance. So you may want to check in your ambulances that are coming to your fairs, if they go use your county name, it's just that will eliminate a lot of the claims that we get. But, and, then, and the little booths, I just want to say one yeah. thing real quick. Those little booths, the one thing that you could do is, is talk to the county attorney because I, I suspect that that group or whoever it is that's calling themselves the county fair boutique isn't really a, a, a legal entity and don't have a business permit of any form. And so that that would be a way to, to put, you know, if they're really problematic is to do away with them is to just simply let them know that they can't conduct business in the county or within the city limits without a business permit and they aren't a legal entity. They can't buy insurance. You know they don't have insurance because they're not a legal entity so they cannot buy a policy of insurance. So, uh, you know, it, 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 and that's a discussion to have again with your county attorney to, to see to see how involved they want to get with it, or if they just want to stay hands off and take that approach in the courts that we don't have anything to do with it, it's not on our property, we're not. You know, take we're not. it as a compliment there. They want to tag team on you <laughs> so bad. You were so successful that they can't. You know, I kind of look at it that way, but the vendors didn't. Yeah. Yeah. No, you're yeah. guaranteed yeah. right though, they are trying to be tagged on you. The same thing. Yeah. Okay, well, yeah. I have a comment about yeah. that. I think sometimes as government, we don't protect our branding. And if you were a large corporation, you would copy, copyright your brand. We all go through the branding process. Davis County gets rebranded. And I think what you need to do is tie down the use of your branding for your county fair. And we don't do that. You know, we're so busy with everything else that we don't give any thought to the fact that most of these guys want to come in and associate themselves, so they brand them or use the brand. They use the logo, they use the wording, and we're looking more at including that in contracts, where we tie down what they can use that is our brand as a county. And then on the other comment that I had was on the ambulance companies, some of them are almost like special service districts. Mm -hmm. They are quasi-government. They have been set up to get around the immunity of the liability, so they set up those special services. But they're still, I mean, they're not exactly connected to the county, but they're still almost government because they're so quasi-agency. So unless they're a private ambulance company, um, you have to treat them a little bit differently. Good to know. The, yeah, the special sure. service districts clearly cannot use your name. They no, they can't use them. But we've got North Davis Fire, we've got South Davis Fire. And what I would recommend, if you, if your county fairground sits in a city, use your city to provide your ambulance service. You know, we have Farmington City come. We don't have Davis County anything doing with the county. We have the city come. And then they assume the, the liability for what they do. So let me ask this. So you can, our, our ambulances are owned by Duchesne County because we own the hospital. So what kind of issues opposite of? So if it is a Duchesne County ambulance, then, then we're okay. That's yeah. fine. And you have coverage, you have liability, and you're protected. We just don't want to be wasting money representing Duchesne County ambulances not connected to you. <laughs> if, if they're with you, 
We want to defend them. That's what we're here for. Yeah, we own the we own the hospital, and so the ambulatory services are through the hospital and around that way. So, but the chain comes to them. Yeah, as long as your vehicle. Yeah. But I think the hospital is insured different. The hospital is right. Yeah. Yes. The hospital operation. So. Yeah, and the doctor. And I think they're part of the hospital. Good. Okay, so I know there's bunnies in the box, but you guys have to think outside the box here. Why? Bunny bites. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. The animal's biting. You win! No. No, a little further. Yeah, this is when you have to go outside the box and think when would we never get in a lawsuit? And that is our most common lawsuit. When do you think we would never get in a lawsuit? What kind of event? What kind of scenario would cause us to have? You write it down and submit them? <laughs> oh, it just keeps away because I didn't know what ambulance service she used with all the crap going on. Oh, oh yeah, that's right sore subject with us. <laughs> okay, I gotta think of some more hits. Uh, it has nothing to do with a, a county person. There's no county person involved. So say the question again, where we're perfectly safe? You, you, the county has done nothing wrong. There's no county person involved. And yet, we get in more lawsuits as a result of it than any other. Um, open writing? No. We go a little further. I mean, think of, what is the last time you think you get sued? Or something you did? Uh, carnival. No? Bingo! We have a winner! We have the one going on. Oh, you. I should have guessed, you might have guessed it. Yeah, yeah. I was holding off. Oh, yeah. <laughs> wind. Really? Mother yeah, Nature. Do you believe Mother Nature? We get more claims from the fair from Mother Nature than any other event. Every claim that I have open almost is tied to some Mother Nature event. <laughs> and, uh, let's see, I guess you just arrow down. Yep. So, some, uh, some people would like to say they call them acts of God because, uh, you know, nobody's at fault, so you got to blame someone, you might as well blame God. <laughs> yeah, I don't know where that came from, but anyway, we can't control, I mean, we can't stop Mother Nature, right? Or, thank God, or can you, can you? I don't think you can, it right? It depends on how pure the commissioners are. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so how do we learn to control them? How do we learn to control lightning, wind, rain, snow, hell? How do we control these events to keep us safe and prepared? Anyone have any ideas? Indoors. Indoors? We're going to learn at 2 o'clock. Exactly. Be prepared though, right? I think you're exactly on it. You have to know that these things can happen. And so if they can happen, what do we do to prevent them? I mean, you can have a, a fair going on with one cloud in the sky, and that one cloud can produce a lightning that comes down and kills some of your fair. But that can happen. Some happen in scout camps for some reason. But um, how do you? How would you prevent that? How would you prevent the county being involved in that? That's probably the the hardest thing I, I can see. And we've been struggling with this because these attorneys, you'd be surprised how they somehow think that. We can control it. We should have somehow warned people about it. Somehow warned them that this area, I mean, I don't want to rain on your break because I know okay. you're going to talk about yeah, it later. Yeah, Are they really having success with that? These attorneys, they, well, they're, they're having success in causing lawsuits and us spending money and defending them. As far as getting money, so far no. So, so far no. First, yours was two years ago too. It hit our county too. We evacuated our derby. Right about a half hour in, fire marshal called. Fire marshal called it, and that was kind of our question: is like, who calls it? Who? Because of lightning um, and windstorm. And so, you know, like I'm a fair manager, and I have no idea what's going on. And there, the announcer's like, we're back right in the fair. I'm like, what? <laughs> what? No, wait, wait, come here. You know, but and they sent everybody to the cars, which the tin was. Lift and off. I mean, I don't know if that was the right thing because they did the. I thought maybe people should stay. I don't know. You could have got. We had trees at our fairgrounds. They're old. They could have. Sounds like you made the right call. We did, and you know what? No, it was over ten minutes. People come back. We lost a few people, but we handled it. But we learned. 
She met lots of people ready. as in they went home. <laughs> <laughs> yes, they killed. went home. No, they were, but so it was probably about the same storm that hit. I don't know, because it was, it was it was like August was like a ten second deal. There wasn't long. lots of damage. Yeah. And that's why we have Rick coming in this afternoon to talk about at what point do you call events off. Well, and then we thought we had a lot of teenagers or without cars or parents, or so we just opened our fair buildings and put, I mean, we just kind of reacted and we didn't have a plan, but we want now, we need one. But I mean, there was all that that you don't really think of as kids, little kids, people drop their kids off, at, you know? And so, yeah. You answered everything I wanted to talk about, we've all met. <laughs> because I, the whole point was just to keep you thinking, what do we do? And you, and you said right off, be prepared. And then you said, we had no idea what to do. You just did my whole presentation. <laughs> we left that, I don't know. You have to be prepared, but now you've got to figure out what you're you going to do go to back. solve it. Mm -hmm. And say, how are we going to solve these problems in the future? Because if that's where the claims are coming from, let's figure out where they're coming from and make sure these attorneys can't drag us in. Because they can say, you know what, we warned people, told them about it, you know. So, and we're going to talk about three different claims. I'm not going to talk about the one in Sevier County too much because I think you're, are you going to talk about that claim uh -huh. specifically? I am. I'll just talk about what it had already, and hopefully, hopefully we won't overlap too much. Do any of you have a policy on unattended minors at the fair? No, not that I know of. What is that policy? Well, you know, I know a lot of the malls and things yeah. uh, have policies that they, they do not allow minors in the mall without parental guidance. And so that's something that you could consider at the fair is that parents aren't using the fair as their babysitter Baby for three days. That, uh, that someone is, is there watching over them and is a big age. And yeah, we're going to have a minor one we talk about too. And He's 17 though, so I mean, so not really a minor, but uh, was it you in the county that had the little boy that fell down the rock? Yes, yeah, just pick on me, it's okay. <laughs> no, but, no, but the, the little, no, that, that, that must have been Duchesne, it was in Duchesne you went up. Because yeah. I know I had the uh, John Sturmer. Anyway, the same thing, a little boy. Rex the rec center, yeah, that was like, not, oh, you're right, it wasn't at the fair, it was at the rec center. But the same point applies, a little boy uh, in a fair type of situation, they had booths and, and the grass, and the little boy climbed up on some rocks and, and uh, fell down and hurt his head and had a life flight. And luckily, I mean, it could have been ugly, but luckily they, the kid got there and he was fine. But the question was, um, why, you know, who was watching them all that? The reason we decided, though, we ended up selling them, we rarely have had to sell some of these, but the reason I mentioned this one is we did sell it because the boy, um, it was a pile of rocks, and the county had put a teeter totter sitting up on top of the pile of rocks. Oh, that's right. They were re that was library. I apologize. They moved all the rocks out of the way. Right. One of those rocks had a teeter totter that was permanently attached to it, so it was attractive. Oh. So it was attractive nuisance because it made that little kid say. <laughs> And so I thought, mm, I don't know, putting a slot, putting a teeter totter up on the hill, <coughs> that's kind of asking for something. Yeah, so instead of a lawsuit, I, they really, it turned out to be they really wanted to pay for the air flight, the life flight. But I said, you'll sign a release for us to pay the life flight directly. And they, even though technically you can't sign a release for a minor, but in the heads of them, they think they've released the claim, so we have to do it. But, yeah. you know, 17 years from now, they, whatever, that kid yeah. can still make a claim. But, I doubt he would because he's okay and it was just a good decision, I think, in that case. But, all right, let's go through these. So, um, here's some of the ones we've seen. Just This is just general and then we'll talk about some uh, slides. Um, you know these big slides, they slide down? We'll talk about those a little more, but those slides, kids, uh, they tip over. The wind comes along. We've had a couple of claims where, you know, these big blow up either houses or slides or whatever, and the kids are playing them on, and a big gust of wind comes along and rolls them over, and next thing you know, one of those air things is rolling along with kids in it, especially little huts. So we've had several of claims of that, or some kid just, you know, runs up and one kid goes, and one kid goes right after him, and they don't have a well monitor, and he lands on the other one. Those are all things you need to transfer that risk. With hold harmless agreements with that group, you have nothing to do with it, but the reason you'll get tied in 
is if the wind comes along and blows it over, they'll say, you didn't warn us. We need to have our place nailed down, you know, secured. Um, rodeos, um, fairs or um, derbies, either way, the spectators are getting out of the stands. They all want that better seat, they all want that better view, and they're willing to stand for it. So they come down and they're standing around your, your gates and your fences, and they're peeking over like this instead of sitting in the stands. Huge problem. I think Tewinna County has that going out there. Uh, claim. We'll talk about that for a minute too. Uh, dash for cash. I know it's uh, these uh, mud. They put a bunch of mud, and you have to run through the mud. And anyway, all again, these are all groups that have come in your fair, and as long as you have good hold harmless agreements, and I don't know if you want to talk about that a little bit, but really it all comes down to all these events can be prevented if we just have good hold harmless agreements. The, the pageants, we had a stage collapse, and the, was that Spirit Carol? <laughs> okay, so I'm actually because Steve Wall called me on that one, so. Anyway, the, the, the wood, they put it together, this part of the boards and stuff, and didn't do it right, and the girls walking, and this is years ago, but. Um, Animal shows. Animals, of course, are always dangerous. You have the horse that is overactive and lightning strikes and the horse panics and hurts a child again. Back to this Mother Nature stuff. Uh, rock climbing walls, we don't see too much on those, and I think you guys do a good job. We just had people call once in a while saying that kid got hurt on the wall. Uh, same with the rides, and maybe malfunctions and different things. But really, I think the fairs are doing an incredible job at doing your whole harmless agreements. It's rare that we get anything that you that you tie it into the county unless this Mother Nature adds to it. That seems to be the link where they're saying that hold harmless agreement's great or that waiver of injury and all that's great. Well you didn't tell us, you didn't warn us that there was going to be a microburst wind, a lightning, a hellstorm, a snowstorm. So it's just interesting how these lawyers seem to try to talk ties in, no matter what we do. So here's the claim in Sevier County where you're talking about just a little bit. And don't let me cross over into what you want to talk about. Okay. It doesn't get hurt the Yeah. We don't, don't have to so, <laughs> so Robert and Jean Miller are an elderly couple, about 80 or so. Yeah. They come to the fair, and it's just a you know regular day at the fair, no warning of any. I don't think there's any warning in the news okay. or anything. I don't right? know where I come from. So. Yeah, it's one of these microburst winds that all of a sudden it just happens. Where all of a sudden you, you just see a, like a little small dirt devil with a little wind coming up and pieces of paper flying. And so there's no warning, no way to get anyone out. The county had all their tents set up with really nice big stakes and all that. Well, there's a group there called, uh, I think they're BMX. There's some sort of uh, BMX group. Oh, yeah stunt group, and they had, um, they set up a booth, so it wasn't one of the county's tents, it was a cheaper version. You know, came more of a canopy with the smaller strings and smaller stakes. So the canopy was secured, uh, this gust of wind picked it up and launched it, and far, didn't it? Pretty far? Oh, maybe 20 feet. Yeah. Oh, no, okay, so, so launched it and landed on these elderly couple. Um, we had a closed head injury on, on the woman and some fractured bones. Uh, they had a great full time agreement. I mean, there was really no reason we should be tied into this lawsuit. But what happened was they went out and got a lawyer. Well, first of all, and here's something we, we have a problem with. When people get hurt at a fair, for some reason, they actually call us. Uh, we also start getting calls from the hospital saying, how do we get our medical bills paid and we send them to you? And we don't even know about the claim at this point. And we're going, and it comes back to, so, oh, someone at the fair told us that we need to get the bills to the county because it was at their fair. And then this has happened with the Millers. I mean, also we got Utah Valley Hospital calling, we got these bills, are you guys gonna pay them? And we're going, who are these people? Yeah, and I, and I don't know where, if they just think. So the first thing we need to do is make sure nobody goes up and says, we're at fault, 
county was negligent. The county did anything. Don't mention the county at all. Because <laughs> somehow the hospitals want to call us. And they get our number. Yeah. We actually have a staff meeting in January every year because we have new people. And that's the, it's strictly on that that if something does happen, We've already versed them in what is said, what isn't said, the proper procedures as far as documenting everything. I won't even allow our people to talk to who's been hurt because something's going to slip that one hour, I'm sorry, with everybody in their little telephone recorders and stuff. That we won't even allow them to talk. It's 911 and you sit there with them and you do it. But that is in January every year and in what, whenever we hire our part-time help every year. They can't even talk to them. That's the number one rule. Because that I'm sorry is going to slip. Yeah, did any of you, you all write that down? Because you nailed it right on. Because what happens when you get, what happens when you see a horrible event like that? And you feel like it's your event? What's your first thought? What's your guilty mind? You usually know who it happened to. So oh, right. You know, it's, it's, it slips like that. And you run up, and this person's laying there with a horribly broken leg, and you run up and say, you know, it's your fair, and you run up and, oh my gosh, are you okay? And you got your county shirt on, mm -hmm. and and you okay? Yeah, I can't believe this happened at our fair. I'm so sorry. We, we're, you know, next thing you know, you're saying things you shouldn't even be saying, just out of pure, um, oh, it's just that inner nature, it's compassion. Yeah, you're just that inner part of you that just wants to help someone, and you start, and so you're bigger by the Yes. So the minute you say you're sorry, you've confessed, you've admitted to the it's your fault. No, you did, as long as you leave it at that. It's oh, when you okay. say I'm so sorry. I knew we should have tied that down. Um, it's that extra sentence that gets thrown in there. Yeah. I'm so sorry. Gosh, if we just told you guys about the wind burst, we, uh, we I should have told you that there's a storm in the area. We should have gotten the last sentence of the kill. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so if you always say you're sorry. I mean, no, no question. You can say you're sorry all day long. The county is so sorry. The county is so sorry. But you just leave it at that. You're just sorry. Do, do you have training materials that you use at that meeting? hand out some things? Yeah, I'm sure I do. It, it's been so indoctrinated that I just do it for memory. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, if you have anything, nice I'll, I'll touch base with you because I, I'd love to have our attorney go through that. We used to go through a mock something that happened and, and because that really burns into the brain what what happens, especially in our ice rink. That's where most of the crap happens. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I bet. Um, well, I mean, you can train yeah, everyone you know, except your commissioners. Yeah. They'll always say that it's the county's fault. Yeah. That's all they care about. But everybody else we can train. Yeah. Yeah. There's kind of an interesting thing that's happening in the Midwest where there's a few cities that are paying out under something called moral obligation. Oh, right. And that's what we're talking about is when somebody's hurt, we think it's our moral obligation to fix it, comfort them and everything. But it's really not unless we have done something negligent. But there's a lot of cities now with their elected officials who pay out based on moral obligation. And so I support what Corpus says you've got to be very, very careful about any statement you make, any questions that you answer, anyone that you talk to. Because <coughs> the public perceives that we have a moral obligation as government to fix anything that goes wrong. Yeah, it got so bad that Texas actually several years ago, the state risk manager uh, pushed some legislation and it's now illegal for a county or city or school district official to offer those types of settlements uh, to people that they, they cannot settle a claim unless they have clear liability. Yeah. So. Because they will, just to get the vote. And right. it's called moral obligation. And unfortunately, right now, the bad economy, a lot of people don't have health insurance, and so they panic because they who's going to pay these bills. Do I go to the hospital or do I not? Because they don't want to have to stuck with the bills. And so it's a definitely causing a problem. Uh, I feel bad he left because I really want to get kudos to you in the county. Because, yeah. I was going to say, before you leave, the, the tent and the wind blowing, we had in Pike County just similar to that, but they were putting up one of the canopies that were quite big. But it was like a day or two before the fair. And a guy from out of town, he pulled up in a brand new truck he bought with all kinds of accessories and things on it. And, uh, <clears throat> really decked out. And it was just a beautiful day. One of the little microbursts came up. The people that were putting it up 
have been called by somebody like, hey, can you come and help us? You know, they hadn't staked it down yet. They were in the middle of it. We just pulled up to watch him, you know, put the tent up and sitting out there on the roadside. Outside of he's in the roadway. <clears throat> Not really on county or town property or anything like that. But they went to help someone when that microburst came off. They blew that over onto his truck and broke one of his new mirrors off. They, you know, they accessorized the <coughs> down so they could see his trailer behind him and things like that. Look that off. And one of the volunteers there came and told him, Oh, that's our fault. We should have tied it down. And, you know, go see the county treasurer. I'm sure he'll pay that. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly what happens. <laughs> and then the commissioner calls and says, hey, can you guys pay this? Because we sold them the lid and, and uh, yeah, that's the kind of thing, well. And uh, I, mean, I, I called the county attorney and he said, that's what, that's what car insurance is for. And I don't want to go start telling them sorry. You know, so. And then they're mad because somebody told them it was right. right. If you would have <laughs> never said anything at first. That, that's, and, and, I think we'll have our attorneys work something up on this area because, as I've told our employees here, there are require uh, restrictions of a government employee offering money to someone that is not authorized. If Shane, if you authorize something that you're going to pay somebody um, to, to, out of your budget and it's not in your budget, and you shouldn't have said that you could. You can be personally responsible for the payment of that under the statute. So that, that would go well with the training that we're doing this not only to protect the county but to protect you because if you authorize something that is, it shouldn't have been authorized, you can be held personally responsible for that payment. So. Wow, that's a pretty picture you just brought up there. Yeah. <laughs> you like that? This is, this is to give you guys kudos for everything you did right. Really? Oh, yeah. No, this is a, this is a, throwing off of wind now, three minutes left, we'll just crank through this. <laughs> this is what they did right. They had a derby out there. Uh, plaintiff kept leaving the stands and going down by the gate. They had, a, they had a sign that said, please stay 10 feet away from them. They had signs posted. You had people telling them back into the seat. He got told over, the announcer came over and said, Please get away from the, the gate. I mean, the, the county did everything right. Uh, he, he sneezed down there one time, just in time for a car to get into the gate and smack into him. Got a head injury, you know, 60,000 medical bills. And you know what? We thought, we're going to go ahead and take a chance on April 17th for a three-day trial on liability only. Because if there's no liability, there's no pre reason to have an expensive trial with damages and you know, people proving his lost wages and all those things. Okay, so what does that mean? I'm in the middle of it. Don't understand that. Liability only means to this is medical if we lose. No, so so this is interesting. It's the first time that, that I can think of this when I've been here that we've done this, but because um, it just barely came up. But but what happens is that normally when you go to trial, they they try to take liability and damages, and you get an overall thing. Well, there's going to be an expensive trial and. We don't think we're at fault. And we are actually surprised that the plaintiff attorney agreed to do this. But, but in this case, you just go in and have a smaller trial and leave out all the experts for medicals and all that stuff. You just decide who is at fault. And if they can show that this guy was more than 50% at fault, is all. they only have to show him 51% at fault, and he gets no damages. He doesn't get anything. Really? Yeah. So what happens is we go to this trial on liability, if they come back and say the county is 25% fault and the plaintiff is 75, we're done, we close our file. It's over. We don't pay a dollar. If they did come back, which we don't see this happening, and said you were 51%, the county was 51% fault and he was 49, then we would have to have another trial for damages. And that would be the expensive trial. We're that we don't have to do that. Well, I know to this point you've spent well over 100000 just in attorney's fees. Right. At this point. right, to get to a trial, yeah, yeah, it's, I, yeah, it's about 80, but yeah, we're, it's expensive by the time you do the discovery and all that. And they've been, it's been so long ago, we find ourselves having to review all the documentation, because we just, I mean, 2007, I don't right. remember how I got here yesterday, let alone <laughs> yeah. 2007. 
And the plaintiff's attorneys want, that's what they're looking for. They want them. They, they use all our weaknesses to get us. They do. But we have a very good attorney on it. You've got to be, everybody from you got, these one call, that's all jackasses are just waiting for something like this yep. to happen. They can't, and they'll take, they bought this case from this joker, and I mean, he probably won't even see a dime out of it because one call, that's all owns it, and they'll do anything they can. They run ads in the paper trying to get people in Vernal, hey, if you were there, come forward. We, I mean, every low life underhand. Yeah, they're on the law, they're on the law firms over advertising all the time. And they're based, they're saying opposite. You guys never warned him. He was standing by the gate. You didn't have a stamp, this very, uh, some sort of Jersey barrier. You didn't have all these things. And, we're, and we think we're going to win. I mean, we really do. We're just, we're just hoping for that date, though, because, uh, yeah, we think we've got a good case. So we're, we're taking a chance of liability. We're hoping that will end quickly. Uh, not dash for cash. This is what we talked about the minor. He did what he's. Uh, guess where they felt the county was negligent in this case? The kid, 17 year old, thinks, man, I don't want to get my new LeBron Nike shoes dirty. Whops off his shoes and goes running into the dirt. Suddenly, of course, there might be something sharp in there, just the brackets to hold it down, steps, cuts his foot, we're at fault because we didn't want him to take off his shoes. Well, we did. They were told not to take off their shoes, and he was 17 year old, and he goes home and tells his mom and dad, oh, they didn't tell me, they told me I should had to take off my shoes. Didn't happen. He was told not to take off his shoes, and, and we're done. So, but on these, just in the final, when? If you're going to have these, good hold harmless agreement, but make sure you warn them. We get wins that can blow these over, and the kids get hurt, and that's it. All right, that's it. We're right on time. Well, I'm going to wait. <laughs> Let's take a couple minutes and uh, refresh your drinks and snacks, and we'll get the next presenter's uh, presentation up and running.